being there with the soldiers in the front lines and recording interviews and being with the camera, it opens so many doors for me to share about who am I talking to? What's my faith? Who are these millions of people that pray for you, for the soldiers, every day? And it made my fellow soldiers feel like they're not alone, like there's somebody in this world, in this evil world, who loves them, who prays for them, and who's on their side. I get a call, you need to go to the IDF, you need to, to report to your unit. And I'm, I'm there, my wife is all shocked, we are all shocked, we've just seen the images of the, the massacre and everything that happened, and I need to leave for an unknown period of time. And you need to go, there's I no... I need to go, there's no, there's no way, and she <laughs> yeah. knows it also, yeah. she, she also served in the IDF, yeah. and, and we know we have, we have to do it, we yeah. just have to do it. So, so I pack a bag and leave. At the beginning, we were stationed for close to two months up north on the border with uh, Lebanon. And then I was moved to the Gaza Strip. So that's kind of my Duchan Yunus. Yeah. But, uh, but I think from the first day that I joined the army, I was shocked when I opened and saw the international media coverage of this war. Because for me in Israel, it was like, they're the bad guys, Hamas did these terrible things. And then the international media, they just completely miss it. Short memories? Yeah. And, and it, it reminds me of times talked about by the prophet Isaiah Yair, where he said, look, uh, he talked about those who call evil good and good evil. Exactly. I think that's where we're at. Prophetic times. Oh, exactly. I don't know how can you call what happened there good and then call us evil, but... Israel then, was attacked. Israel was invaded, not the other way around. Yeah, we are defending ourselves. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and then in that moment, I realized that this is not just a normal war. Okay, this is a spiritual war and it's fought on multiple fronts. So we have the physical front, we have the spiritual front, <coughs> of course, and we have also the front for the public's opinion. And sadly, I realized that we are losing this front. We are losing the battle for the public opinion. And, uh, and together with my, my team and TV and Israel, we realized we have to do something. So, you know, what I have, I have my phone. So I just started, uh, you know, to, to record and to share what's going on from the, from the front lines. Yeah. God uses every situation to glorify his name. You know, every situation. I had like, okay, so I'm here with the phone, like no light. I just used a, a little headlight in order to light yeah. myself, yeah. you know, at night as I'm recording and sharing when I have some time before I go to bed. And people watch it, and, and, it more, and more people watch it. More and more. And people are praying, and yeah. people learn new stuff, and share, and, and it grew, and it grew, and God really blessed this, yeah. this whole operation. So it was yeah. like amazing for me to see. No doubt, and you get to Gaza, you get to Khan Yunus, and all of a sudden, the IDF spokesperson's unit approaches you, and you got some pretty official access there that no one else had, certainly no other Christian TV network in Gaza. Yes, definitely. So, so I get a call one day from the IDF spokesperson's unit saying, hey, we've been watching your videos and we've been searching for this soldier that is reporting from the front lines. And I thought immediately, okay, so what, the, what are they going to tell me now? And they said, we love it. We want you to be representing the IDF officially, wearing uniform, and make sure you tell, we'll tell you what you can say, what is classified, but you'll be our representative from Khan Yunus. And this is like one month before CNN were there and you know, stated that, uh, they, that they are the first one in, in Khan Yunus and in the tunnels. You were the first there. So, so really, listen, God, God opened doors and I think that uh, he had a reason. And on top of sharing with Christians and with people all around the world what is happening here in Israel. I think there's an, another side to it, because being there with the soldiers in the front lines and recording interviews and being with the camera, it opens so many doors for me to share about 
Who am I talking to? What's my faith? Who are these millions of people that pray for you, for the soldiers, every day? And it made my fellow soldiers feel like they're not alone, like there's somebody in this world, in this evil world, who loves them, who prays for them, and who's on their side. And, and they didn't know that. They did not know that. I mean, that's why I come here all the time, and especially now more than ever for such a time as this, Yair. And, hey, look, you were shining light in the darkness in Gaza. You were shining the light of Yeshua, Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're a follower of Jesus, follower of Yeshua. How is it expressing your faith uh, in the IDF and in Gaza on the front lines? How did your faith help get you through this experience and strengthen you? So the Gaza Strip in Hanus is a scary place. And every day we had one or two. It was actually an average of two Israeli soldiers that were killed in action in the Gaza Strip and in Khan Yunus, some from my unit, some from other units. So it's very scary. Uh, but I think that after my first night there, God put his like, peace and filled me up with this peace and purpose. And a lot of it is because he used me, I think, for, for sharing with the soldiers yeah. and with people all around the world. You were an ambassador for Christ there yeah. in the trenches, on the front lines, in the tunnels. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. it just showed me that even in that dark place, which is, I think, one of the darkest places in the world, and you can feel the spirit of evil in it, somehow God was with me and made me feel at peace and with all the soldiers around me. And I, I said, listen, I'm not going to be depressed. I'm going to be somehow happy in this situation and, you know, do my best uh, in whatever I have. And I had the option really to share with many soldiers what am I believing in, which is Yeshua, you know, and that Yeshua is the Messiah, son of David, the Messiah that the people of Israel is waiting for and is hoping for. And also me and us as Jews, we can believe in him and we shouldn't be afraid of him. So, so God is using every situation and you wouldn't believe how people are open when you're stuck with them and bombs are falling out in every direction. So, And you're a pretty good communicator, <laughs> I have to say. And if you want to see more from Yair, again, folks, TBN Israel, great channel. You just passed half a million subscribers. Wow. God is expanding your territory. You, you might not have even known that. You're in the tunnels in Kanyus <laughs> until a few days ago. But folks, TBN Israel, please subscribe. You can see Yair on a regular basis today, once again. He's reporting from the Gaza border, and there's much more to come here uh, from Yair on TBN Israel and on TBN on the Stackelbeck Tonight Show, much more. Um, tell us real quick, I don't want to keep you out here too long because it's cold here in Jerusalem. It's a chilly <laughs> night in God's one and only holy city, and you deserve a break after the past three months, needless to say, Yair. Uh, tell us a little bit about your personal journey, uh, how you came to the Lord. Mm -hmm. and your initial service in the IDF. Tell us a little bit about your life, your, your journey over the past several years and your, how you, you've grown in your faith. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, listen, well, I was, I was born actually to a mother and father, Israelis, Jews who not far from here, about uh, 10 minutes walk from this studio. And so I was born and raised as a follower of Jesus. But as you may know, you cannot be born into, into the faith. You need to make a decision. So I remember when I was about 15, I really decided I was in my bed and decided to follow Jesus and to welcome him into my heart for real. And, um, and then I walked with him. But being in high school in Israel and a believer of Jesus means that you're the only one in your entire school or your entire grade who believes in Jesus. So that's hard, and kids are tough. Oh, yeah. So in the beginning, I, I, I kept my faith a secret, which I learned the hard way <laughs> that it was a very bad mistake. Because once my friends knew, they were not uh, you know, taking it very easy. They uh -huh. thought that I'm a traitor. Yeah. To, to Judaism, to Israel, and how can you believe in Jesus? He's the Messiah of the Gentiles. Was he was that? Jewish, and he lived in Galilee here in Israel. But yeah, I know that. <laughs> but no, but we know yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, definitely. Yeah. 
But and they, a lot of folks don't know that, I think. Mm -hmm. People might, yeah, he actually lived here in Israel. Jesus was a Jew, newsflash, but a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, so definitely they did not know that. Yeah. But then, you know, it took me a while to gain their trust because they thought, why did you, didn't you share? Why didn't you tell us? If that's what you believe, you, can, you don't need to hide it. That's like after a while. Yeah. Now we're best friends again good. and everything is and good. And you were young, I mean. Exactly. Part of the journey that the, yeah. Lord, that the Lord had you on. Then, okay, at the age of 18, you joined the army, men and women in Israel. Men go for three years, women go for two years. New place, new people have a fresh start. Now I'm not making the same mistake again. On my first night in the base, I decide I'm opening my Bible that includes the New Testament, like one book. And then I'm reading it automatically. What's this book? What are you reading? What is this? But you're not Orthodox. But uh, what? But Jesus? And then I said, yes, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Yeshua. He is my Messiah. I believe in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Boom, opens up a million conversations with yeah. Orthodox soldiers, with secular soldiers. Some heated conversations at times, I'm sure. Or? Listen, immediately, definitely. Yeah. But Intense. Listen, what I realized, and I think this is something for, for all of us, in wherever we are stationed and God is putting us, people will respect you if you're true to yourself and if you're a good person good friend, a good worker, a hard worker, an example, they will see that. They will see God's light and then they will ask you the questions. So you don't need to be, you know, in their face with your face. They will come to you because when you see something, you know, shining, that's Jesus, it's, it's very hard to disregard it. Yeah. So, so that's how I shared my faith in the army and God was with me there. And uh, if we, uh, we have time, I have like a, a really cool testimony about how I met my wife. That would be awesome. And that's like, like an amazing story, Please I think. Please share, yeah. Okay, so it also has something to do with our producer, uh, Yosef, here. Yes, but our dear friend, yeah, yes, yeah. of course. Okay, so before every Jewish boy, Israeli boy, joins the army, then his mother has a prayer. She prays that God will send him to the army safe and bring him back safe. Okay? My mother prayed that prayer, but she also prayed another prayer, that I will have at least one believer in Jesus with me in the army. And oh, just one. For you and for our viewers, it might seem, ah, another believer, what's the, what's the problem? I never had any believer with me, not in high school, not in school, in any, not in my basketball teams, was always me alone. And yet you're, you're so bold in your faith always. I, I can't imagine how hard it, it was at times, but especially listen, as a young guy. I wasn't that bold uh, yeah. like back then. But that peer pressure I learned, I learned the guy. hard way, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, okay, so that was the prayer. And I said, okay, good, she's praying, like, but I didn't expect anything. I joined the army. First thing she does, calls me, so you have a believer with you? A believer in Jesus with you? I said... No, no mother, I don't have, I didn't expect to have. She said, okay, I keep praying, I'll call you next week. And that's my mother, she was persistent with, with God. Yeah. <laughs> she kept praying, kept praying, calls me again. A week later, do you have a believer with you? No. Okay, I keep calling, hangs the phone, calls again. During that two and a half weeks in the army, I'm guarding in the middle of the night and I see Yosef's brother, Rafi, uh, another mutual <laughs> another friend, another mutual friend, <laughs> who is also a believer in uh, in Jesus, oh, yeah. coming in. So I'm telling him, "What are you doing here?" And he's telling me, "I was stationed here from a different unit." And I say, "Okay, so so where are you sleeping?" And just so you will know, the army is a huge place. It has like multiple units. Yeah. Each unit has multiple brigades and each brigade has multiple companies and each company has multiple platoons and each platoon has you know different four different rooms each room has eight bunk beds and he was placed in my company in my platoon in my room in my bunk bed above me 
So that's the, the power of a mother's prayer. Uh, exactly. Just the power say, of you know. a praying woman, no yeah. doubt. Of, yeah. of a mom, especially. Yeah. No, definitely. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah. What a testimony. Now, you mentioned your wife. That, that's amazing enough, but you mentioned your wife and the testimony of how you guys met. Connected. Yeah. So fast forward to that. I get released from the army. My mother is praying that uh, I will have a wife that believes in Yeshua, in Jesus. Also, in Israel, Messianic community, people who believe in Jesus, very small. Chances are like there's 0.001% of the population. Wow. Of course, you need to divide it to two because, you know, men, women, yeah. and then I need to like the, that person also. Sure. So, you know, it's kind of important. It's kind of important, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, <clears throat> fast forward, she's been praying, praying, praying. I also thought, okay, what are the chances? But God, I'm giving it to you because I don't want to marry, you know, somebody who does not share my faith. You can't. It's, it's impossible. Yeah. So I left it to God. I'm sitting reading the Bible with uh, Rafi's father. A great and he, man. I, and he's telling me, my daughter got released. She was serving in a bunk bed above her with, uh, my, with a good friend of mine. She's, uh, she's a really beautiful, amazing uh, woman who believes in the Lord. But she's redhead, so take a look if you like. I don't know why. why, yeah. why. <laughs> There's some beautiful redheads yeah. out there. Come on, including your children. <laughs> I, I know. Listen, I, I, can, I, I didn't. My mother is also redhead. I guess yeah. that's what the the connection. Oh, okay. You know, so that he said, okay. But uh, he said, okay. So I say, okay. I'll, I see how she looks on, on Facebook and text her. I said, no, I don't. I called his daughter. I said, no, I don't want you to call her on Facebook. She wanted me to like text her on Facebook. Okay. I said, no, give me her phone number. I'll call her. I'm old school. I am too. Yeah. <laughs> so I did. And then uh, we went on a blind date. And uh, the rest is, uh, is history. And now I uh, have four redheads back in my house. Yes, you do. You're outnumbered. Yeah, what a yeah. beautiful family. I know they're, they're your pride and joy here. Hey, what an awesome testimony. Uh, this was incredibly encouraging. I can see how, hey, uh, you would keep morale high in Gaza because you just have such a positive spirit about you all the time. And sharing a great testimony like that, I know you were sharing it with your fellow soldiers in the darkest of places in Khan Yunus and beyond here throughout the land. Hey, last question, one kind of serious and one looking forward. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are asking, and I was just up on the northern border. You were there mm -hmm. not too long ago. As the IDF continues to complete this difficult job of crushing Hamas decisively, and it's not over yet by a long shot, it's going to take some more time, as you said earlier, what do you see when you look north? It seems that another great evil, it doesn't seem, we know there's another great Iranian-backed evil gathering to the north. What's your outlook there about what needs to be done about that Hezbollah threat? Mm -hmm. We were talking off camera earlier, just getting used to civilian life again, and that's for another conversation maybe. But real quick, okay, Hezbollah, the north, and what's next for you? Okay, so I'll start with, uh, with Hezbollah in the north. So Hamas is one enemy with a certain size and threats and capabilities. But Hezbollah is a whole different ballgame. Their level of technology their military abilities, their support from Iran. It's a whole different war in terms of casualties on the Israeli side, civilian and soldiers, and in terms of the duration of the war. So it's a whole different ballgame. But listen, the situation up north cannot continue as it is. It's intolerable. 80,000 people evacuated from their exactly. homes, no timetable for returning home? And, and who would return? What's the difference? Right. I mean, they would return. And you have Hezbollah on the other side of the border. Which wants to duplicate or exceed October 7th, just in the north. Exactly. They had the same slogan. Yeah. They're backed by the Iranians that burn Israeli flags, that burn United States flags, that call, you know, Israel the small Satan and the United States the big Satan. So that's the enemy. This is a spiritual war. Yeah, it is. So until we create a buffer zo zone or a yeah. security barrier between our communities and the Hezbollah presence in Lebanon, nobody can return to their houses. It's just not, not viable.
And I'm so glad, by the way, you mentioned that this is also a threat to the United States and the world, folks. Israel is just the first line of defense for the civilized world. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So until we gain this security barrier, I don't know if it's with diplomatical pressure. Yeah. I don't know if it's with an, uh, a maneuver, ground maneuver of IDF forces with the support of the U.S. and our allies. But until we do something, the reality cannot get back to normal. It's just yeah. not, not a possibility. And we've been hearing a lot about fights in Gaza and operations in Gaza, but every day since the beginning of this war, there's a battle between Israel and Hezbollah. It's like we're punching them, they're punching us, we're punching them, we're destroying that for them, they're launching rockets at us. And every little spark can ignite a big, big explosion up north and then the rest of the world will be dragged into it. Oh yeah. Very fast. The, the, the coming fast. Great Northern War, I guess we could call it. And for you, hey, you'll be busy, you're a family man, uh, getting back home after three months uh, away, obviously, and exciting things at TBN Israel and with the channel. Tell us a little bit more about that, what you have planned. Yeah, definitely. So, so God opened the door during this, uh, this war for us to reach millions of people across the world with what is happening in Israel and encourage them to pray for the situation here. So we decided to keep doing it every day and share what is happening from Israel with millions of people around the world. So that's what we're doing and we want to expand that. We want to create more content. We want to connect between the Christians all over the world and everybody who wants to connect with Israel, with Jerusalem, with TBN Israel here. We have a team that is passionate about sharing the truth of what is happening in Israel with the world so that people can really pray for the situation by understanding what is happening. It's very hard, you know, it's very hard oh, yeah. to pray for something or for someone that you do not know. You need to have a personal relationship. Yeah. God is a personal God. So everything has to be personal. Yeah. So that's what we're trying and we are creating here. And, uh, and we can't do it without the support of our viewers. We're now also launching uh, a nonprofit as part of TBN, TBN Israel, in order to raise more funds for more productions in Israel, okay? This that will be aired on, on the TBN platforms, on our social media, for people around the world to watch what we're doing here. Absolutely amazing. And last, last request, uh, how can we pray for you and for Israel right now? We've got millions of believers, I'm sure, will watch this, and they want to know, how can I help? Any particular prayer points, requests that you have for yourself, your family, and of course for the land, the IDF? Uh, yes, definitely. So I think that more than praying for the IDF soldiers that are fighting every day and for us to return the hostages, which is super important and goes without saying, I think that we need to pray for those who are staying at home with the children, with the businesses, the, the wives that suddenly became single mothers because the husband is in the army for so long. And also, for me personally, returning to the civilian life is not easy. It's, it's a shift and it takes time. So I know that God has plans and He's in control, but please pray for the IDF soldiers also who are released and in the process of getting back to their normal lives. And of course, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and join us in sharing the truth of what is happening here so that everyone in the world will know who we are fighting, why we are fighting, and why we need to do it.